I'd now like to introduce our second speaker, uh, Rudo Quaranda, Kuramba, sorry, who is National Director of World Vision in Uganda. Uh, she may be a familiar face to some of you who saw the series that Melissa mentioned, the documentary series Millionaire's Mission, which was showed on ABC TV um, a year or so ago. She featured prominently in that series. Rudo was previously Director of Advocacy, Communications and Education with World Vision UK, and before that, National Director of World Vision Zimbabwe. Rudo was born in Zimbabwe and is a human rights lawyer by profession. From pri private practice, she moved into defending the rights of women survivors of gender violence through the Musasa Project. She then worked for a year as Associate Protection Officer with the UN High Commissioner for Refugees before returning to the Musasa Project as Director. Rudo has served as an Executive Board Member for Zimbabwe of Women in Law and Development in Africa, a member of the Advisory Board for the UNDP Government of Zimbabwe Capacity Building Project on Conflict Transformation and has also been chairperson for the National Association of Non-Governmental Organisations. Rudo is visiting Perth on her way home from the World Vision Australia's Measuring Effectiveness Conference. And so we thank the organisers for bringing her to Australia so that she could be here tonight. Please welcome Rudo. Thank you, Jean, and um, thank you, Melissa Park for giving us such an elaborate overview of the issues concerning women, particularly in Africa. Uh, judging from my own background, I couldn't agree more with the issues affecting women in Africa. They continue to be the poorest, the most hardworking, and the ones who get impacted on by issues that continue to be challenges for African uh, societies, including HIV and AIDS and um, just the basic challenges affecting the communities we serve. Now, I'll not be in a position to give an elaborate overview of Africa. Fortunately, my responsibilities are confined to Uganda on behalf of World Visions Ministry. So I would like to share a little bit about some of the challenges that I think uh, the Australian government, the Australian people could make an impact on as Australia seeks to re-engage Africa um, and help them to meet some of the Millennium Development Goals. One of the challenges that you often um, come across when you work in Africa is that some of the issues are so interrelated, but I'm aware that the Australian government's development assistance framework for Africa does seek to focus on food security and agriculture, and that is the topic that I've chosen to speak on, particularly because of its importance to the people of Uganda. I'm also aware of uh, the focus on MDG 4 and 5, which deals with maternal and child health, which I know is also an issue for Uganda because uh, just recently in the local paper we had a story that was produced which shows that Uganda is unlikely to hit the target of uh, 31 uh, pay 1,000 live deaths, particularly on the issue of child mortality. In fact, Uganda has only managed, according to a WHO report, to reduce the level of child mortality from 122 per thousand to 76, so well short of the 31,000 live births per thousand, which is the target for the MDGs. I'm also aware that the issue of water and sanitation remains a challenge for the Ugandan people, with over 60% of them unable to have uh, safe and portable water, particularly in the communities that World Vision is seeking to serve. But we found that in our work, um, water is often the very first things that you try and bring to communities because it is so fundamental to survival, to um, the progression of children and the well-being of women, as you so ably mentioned. So we do work, work in the area of water, but today I've sought to focus on the issue of food security, primarily because for Uganda, which is a country that had so much potential at independence to achieve a lot in the area of food security, Uganda still continues to fall short of what it could achieve in the area of agriculture. For those of you who had an opportunity to watch Millionaire's Mission, you would know that the entrepreneurs from the UK 
sought to intervene in the area of linking farmers to markets. And um, that is an ongoing challenge because it's not just about production, it's about markets, it's about investment in infrastructure, it's about trade laws. And I thought I would engage with the Australian public and representative of the Australian government and seek to ask them as they re-engage Africa to have dialogue with African leaders about their own policy frameworks in the area of food security. Just to give you some of the realities for the Ugandan economy. Agriculture remains the mainstay of the Ugandan economy, providing a significant share, 21%, of gross domestic product and 85% of export earnings. It provides employment to about 85% of the population and the bulk of raw materials used for mainly agro-based industrial sector in Uganda. Over 80% of the population live in the rural area and depend directly or indirectly on agriculture. And needless to say that most of these rural poor who are involved in agriculture are women. Unfortunately, Uganda still has a huge gender disparity where although the men are there in the communities, they generally spend whatever the men, the women work on. And I, I remember particularly the area that was visited by the entrepreneurs, which is in the southwest of Uganda. It is just amazingly, it confronts you as you drive into the community that you find the men drinking and the women digging. And unfortunately, because of the hilly terrain around that area, there is very little mechanization in agriculture. So women have to just engage in digging themselves. And someone talked about the issue of population and population control. Uganda is uh, on a, in a much smaller land space than Australia, but has 33 million people occupying that, and they are all competing for land which is a very scarce resource. Over 80% of the population, as I said, live in rural areas. Agricultural outputs are almost exclusively from smallholder farm, uh, farm households who own an average less than one acre of land. In light of the fact that the bulk of the population live in the rural areas and end their living from agriculture, the success of any effort to reduce poverty and address the problem of food and livelihood security will largely depend on increasing agricultural production and productivity and developing non-farm rural-based employment activities. The current policy flame framework impacting on agriculture is still well below what it needs to be. And the poverty eradication plan that was put in place by the Ugandan government in 1997 and subsequently re revised in 1999 and 2004 still remains very much a, a document in the shelves of many technocrats, but it still has to be implemented for the communities to really feel the impact. And hence, my real call on the Australian government, the Australian people, and us as um, aid agencies, non-governmental organizations working in Uganda is to engage with the government of Uganda to put in place the right policy framework so that whoever else is partnering with communities to enhance the quality of agriculture is working within a framework which is supported by the government and can really make the impact very often for us, our interventions at, at community level. But without